All right, so today I want to start a new playlist, which is really interesting and important for me. And so, and it is called Information Theory of Deep Learning. And how information theory, so if it is information theory, so in the first few couple of lectures, I will be talking about fractals. And also I will be talking about communication in electrical engineering. Just one lecture, communication. And I need to talk because mutual information, mutual information and entropy are are really important in information theory and in machine learning. So I will talk about it. And then, you know, sparse coding, sparse coding nowadays is done by by deep learning methods and some ideas in, on mutual information. And finally, deep learning. I will talk about most of the algorithm that are very important for using mutual information and information theory in general for deep learning. And uh, of course, a sparse coding is related to uh, compressed sensing or compressive sensing, compressive sensing. And uh, of course, you can you can look at information theory through the theory of uh, that great uh, Jewish uh, computer scientist about information bottleneck. which is a very beautiful theory and very important in machine learning. And deep learning is related to information bottleneck. So, so today I will talk about fractals, which is a part of, which I see it as an important uh, factor to understand information theory. And... Um, Later, I will talk about communication. Then I start with sparse coding and some algorithm that uses mutual information uh, to model deep learning problems. Uh, and also, um, I may talk about information bottleneck as well. But I won't talk about compressive sensing uh, because it is very related to techniques that we use in sparse coding. So it is enough for me to talk about sparse coding. Sparse coding, for example, you use it convolutional sparse coding, hierarchical sparse coding, and uh, more recently using deep learning for sparse coding, totally end-to-end -end deep learning approach. So let's let's start let's start by fractals. You know, if you want to understand why information theory plays an important role in machine learning, you should understand fractal geometry, fractals, at least the basic definitions in fractals. Otherwise, you cannot fully enjoy uh, information theory the way I enjoy that. So what is fractal dimension? Fractal dimension. So, I think information should be encoded in fractals. So if I, for example, if I multiply, for example, this is called Koch curve. And if I multiply the length by three, so, and this is, for example, 60 uh, degree, and the length, multiply the length by 3, so R, R becomes 3, and I get 4 copies. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I get 4 copies, so N is equal to 4. So we can now compute the 
we can now compute the fractal dimension, which is just log of n divided by log of r, which is equal to log of 4 divided by log of 3, which is 0 0.60206 divided by 0.47712, which is equal to 1.262. So we have calculated, so this is the fractal dimension of Koch curve. I will give you another example, but just, just look at this. Um, four is just the number of copies that I get. One copy, two copy, three copy, four copy. Uh, so you see, this part and this part information doesn't change. You can think that this special part, if we need to 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 to, let's say refine, you need to uh, find to to make it. More de to to have more details about this. So so you put it like this. So this part, the information of this part, I can say is increased, but the, this part and this part is not is not changed anymore because maybe that part is not important. For example, in machine learning, you may. Uh, decompose your state space into several zones, in some parts you have lots of data points. And in other points, unfortunately, you have few data points. So if you divide into training set and test set, you must, you must take care because otherwise you cannot good get, uh, get good um, generalization. And so you are now understand which part of data set may contribute to the output because a neural network, a neural network, although the architecture of that is really important, but the distribution of data that you put, that you give to the neural network is also important as well. So a combination of architecture, number of layers, number of neurons, and the data set is important to understand the information. So another example that I should say uh, in, any, in any talk about fractal dimensions, because you need to give more examples, is Sierpinski triangle. So you punch a triangle in the middle. What I mean is that you have a you have a triangle and then you you now punch, let's punch, let's punch a triangle in the middle. And what you get if you if you keep going, you punch in the middle, you punch in the middle, punch triangle in the middle. So how, let's count how many parts we have. One, two, and three. So we have three copies. So if you just calculate D is log of N divided by log of R, which is log of uh, N is the number of copies. As you see, one, two, three copies. So log of three divided by log of R and r is the is the length as i said but the length that we we are multiplying so it's just 2 and uh, so what you get is 1.585 so we have calculated the fractal dimension for sierpinski triangle and all of these ideas goes back to Mandelbrot, and especially in 1993, he quoted that clouds are not spheres, mountains are not cones, coastlines are not circles, and bark is not smooth, nor does lightning travel in a straight line. 
So now you understand that Mal- Mandelbrot, uh, I-, I don't know if he knew how much he knew about advanced measure theory, but all of these things are related to measure theory, which is a part of functional analysis. And so I add to his quote that data points do not lie on your favorite manifold. So welcome to Markov chains and fractals. All right, so the next example is Sierpinski carpet. So we have a carpet like this. The length here is one. And then uh, you divide it to 1.3. So one, one third, one third, one third. And then in the next iteration, you do it again. You do it again. So in this way, you have created the Sierpinski carpet. So let's count R, R three times and uh, the number of copies is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight. So you can calculate D, which is log of N, N is eight, divided by log of R, what is R, R is three, so it becomes 1.89. So the fractal dimension of Sierpinski carpet is 1.89. So you see that Sierpinski carpet takes more space than Sierpinski triangle. I'll give you another example. Contour set. Uh, so we have one and then you divide it you get one third, one third, and then you get one ninth, one ninth. And you, so you repeat this. So what you get is you have one third of original size, and then you get two copies to build the next piece. So you can calculate the is log of n divided by log of r, 0.63. And finally, uh, I want to say contour dust. So you take these out. So if you calculate, it becomes four copies of original size and log of n divided by log of r is 1.26. And these are examples for, for these uh, fractals. But uh, you know, uh, Hausdorff measures is also important for you to understand. I don't talk about graphlets and graph limits and those things. Uh, so I only talk about still talk about concepts like fractals, Hauser of measures. Uh, uh, I, I really like Hauser of Institute. I've learned many things from their lectures. So Hauser of measure, you know, Lebesgue measure, which is a critical part of measure theory. We start with Lebesgue measure is for example you 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 give a set you you given a set you 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 find the measure of of the set as the infimum of all the areas qi such that the union of them a is a subset of them and qi is square so I can say that uh, House of Measure is a generalization of the Lebesgue measure to arbitrary metric spaces, 
For example, you have a curve like this, and then you decompose it with some circles. So let's calculate the L8 of gamma. So it's the infimum of all diameters of BI and BI. BI is a ball, but, but the diameter of BI is less than delta. Uh, and uh, the L of gamma is just the limit of L of gamma, L of delta of gamma, when, when delta goes to zero. So when the radius, uh, for example, radius of this is delta, when delta goes to zero, you have more balls. So this is the way at the limit you can calculate this length. I think that's enough for uh, these topics. Uh, I, now I want to start um, communication theory in electrical engineering. So I talk about Shannon coding and Shannon final coding and those things very quickly, very, very quickly. So you know Shannon final coding? Shannon final coding? We use it in everyday life. In, For example, you want to zip in a zip file format. It's just Shannon Fanon coding. And so you have a method with high probability. And uh, so they carry, because they have high, high probability, they carry less information. For example, you toss a coin and it's a bias coin, 90% of time it comes head, so it's carry less information. You already know that it, it, it may come heads. So even tossing that it doesn't give you any information. And uh, we deal with these things in machine learning, in dimension reduction especially. So you have a message, you have a digital message, and we have some codes. But, and we send messages with high information through large number of bits. If it doesn't have information, we don't need to spend too much uh, money on, on these things. But if, as, if it is high information, then it is uh, economically, it is fair to, to uh, devote some large number of bits or to, uh, to spend some money and have large number of bits. Because if you have a large number of bits, you're, so everything is about bandwidth. Bandwidth is expensive. So reducing the redundancy, reducing the redundancy, these things are also highly related to computational neuroscience and cognitive science and psychometrics and psychology. But uh, I only like mathematics, so I don't spend time talking about them. We use bandwidth spectrum efficiently. So by reducing the, uh, the redundancy, we can use the bandwidth spectrum very efficiently. And let me talk about uh, those uh, Shannon Fanon coding. So, you, you for example, you have P one is one one half, P two is one fourth, P three is one eighth, P four is one eighth, and so you arrange them in a 
decreasing order for probabilities. For example, you send uh, 